the rates of reaction section of the chemistry paper starts with question 1.4 and 1.5. 1.4 reads, zinc granules react with excess hydrochloric acid solution in the reaction given here. Which one of the following combinations of volume and concentration of HCl will result in the highest initial reaction rate for the same mass of zinc granules used? Assume that the zinc granules are completely covered by the acid in all cases. Now, what's important for us to see here is that they've told us initially, they've told us that there's excess hydrochloric acid. The fact that there's excess hydrochloric acid means that the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that is that are present is actually not that important to us, especially since they've then asked us for the initial reaction rate, where we know that the only thing that can then affect the rate of a reaction is the concentration. And so our answer here very simply is to choose the hydrochloric acid solution that has the highest concentration, the highest concentration being that of option B, which is the correct answer to 1.4. 1.5 reads, the role of a catalyst in a chemical reaction is to increase the, and the catalyst we know does not increase the, rate of the forward more than the rate of the reverse, we know that all that a catalyst does it is it increases the entire rate of the reaction. It doesn't change the heat of the reaction. It does change the activation energy, but it actually decreases the activation energy. And so the only thing that the catalyst does for or does increase is the rate of reaction. So the correct answer there to 1.5 is option D. Question five reads, the reaction of calcium carbonate and excess dilute hydrochloric acid, HCl, is used to investigate one of the factors that affects reaction rate. The balanced equation for the reaction is given here. The same mass of calcium carbonate is used in all experiments and the temperature of the hydrochloric acid in all experiments is 40 degrees Celsius. The reaction conditions for each experiment are summarized in the table below. And here we can see importantly that the same mass or the same volume and same concentration of hydrochloric acid is used in each case. And the only thing that is changed in each experiment is the state of division of the calcium carbonate. So 5.1 asks for this investigation, write down the dependent and independent variable where the independent variable is the variable that we change. We, as the person doing the experiment, we change this between each experiment. So this is the one thing that we have control over. And in this case, what we have changed is we have changed the state of division. We have changed how the calcium carbonate occurs. And so our options, there are granules, lumps, and powder. And so the independent variable, the thing that we change, we can say is either the state of division or another way to say this, the state of division is actually in the surface area of the calcium, calcium carbonate. Once we know what our independent variable is, it's easier for us to answer what the dependent variable is because our dependent variable is what changes as a result of our change. So every time we have changed from granules to lumps and then lumps to powder, something changes in the experiment. And what changes is the amount of time that that, take, that experiment takes to complete. And we are often tempted to write time as the dependent variable. But that is not the most correct answer because although time is what we are measuring, what we are actually measuring is how quickly the reaction happens. And we just happen to do that using time. So the dependent variable here is the rate of reaction or reaction rate, because that is what changes as a result of the change that we have made. Not that they have asked it here, but just for interest sake, the control variables here is that we have used exactly the same temperature of hydrochloric acid, and we've used the same mass of calcium carbonate. These are the things that we have done to ensure that this experiment is fair. The same goes for our volume and concentration. The control variables are the things that we must keep the same to ensure that we present a fair experiment and that the results are only a reflection of what we have changed. 
The question then goes on. The carbon dioxide gas produced during experiment A is collected in a gas syringe. The volume of gas collected is measured every 20 seconds and the results obtained are shown in the graph below. 5.2, what can be deduced from the graph regarding the rate of reaction during the time interval 20 to 40 seconds? And what's important for us to see here is that in the time interval from zero to 20 seconds, that is essentially a straight line, which represents roughly a constant rate. And then what changes from 20 to 40 seconds is that that rate or the gradient starts to decrease. So what we can say here is that the gradient starts to decrease between 20 and 40 seconds. The gradient decreases, decreasing gradient. And then importantly, what we need to say is we need to say what exactly that means, and what can be deduced from this. So a decrease in gradient means that the rate slows down, or we can say a slowing rate of reaction. Because the gradient is decreasing, the reaction rate is slowing down. The next question, 5.2.2, asks us to comment on the time interval 60 to 120 seconds, where we can see that 60 is where this graph becomes a horizontal line. The volume produced reaches the maximum value of 500 cubic centimeters, and it does not change from there. And so what this means to us is we say, uh, we say that this has produced a straight line. The graph is now a straight line and the meaning or what exactly that means for us is that the reaction has stopped or the reaction has reached completion. So the fact that there is no more product being produced means that the reaction has stopped. Question 5.3 asks us to calculate the average rate in centimeters, in cubic centimeters per second, at which carbon dioxide is produced in the experiment. And what's important here is, although there isn't a given formula for this, it's important to write down some kind of formula so that the marker knows what you are doing. And so the rate in this case, because they've asked in centimeters per second, the rate is always going to be, or in this case, is going to be the change in volume over the change in time. In this case, they have asked for the rate of this entire reaction, we need to realize that this reaction stops at 60 seconds, which is what we pointed out in question 5.2.2, because from 60 seconds onwards, the reaction has stopped. So when we are asked for the rate of this reaction, we need to use the time 60 seconds because it is only in 60 seconds that this reaction happens. And so what we can say is we can say that the volume changed by 500 cubic centimeters in that time of 60 seconds, which then tells us that our average rate of reaction is 8.33 cubic centimeters per second. Question 5.4. How will the volume of carbon dioxide produced in the experiment B compared to that produced in experiment A choose greater than, smaller than, or equal to? And here we would be tempted to look and see that experiment B uses lumps instead of granules and therefore a change in surface area is going to affect the rate. And that is all correct. But the question is asked what volume of CO2 is produced. And since they've told us that right from the start that we always use the same mass of calcium carbonate, irrespective of the state of division, since we always use the same mass of calcium carbonate and the same number of moles, of hydrochloric acid, the number of moles of carbon dioxide or the volume of carbon dioxide that's produced is always going to be the same. So our answer to question 5.4 is equal to. Again, the reason for that being that we are using exactly the same mass of both our reactants, same mass of calcium carbonate, same number of moles of hydrochloric acid. So the volume produced will not change although the rate at which it's produced will change slightly. Question 5.5 reads, a graph is now drawn for experiment C on the same set of axes. How will the gradient of this graph compare to the gradient of the graph for experiment A? Choose greater than, smaller than, or equal to. And so what experiment C, how experiment C differs from experiment A, is that experiment A uses granules and experiment C uses 
powder. So powder, we know, has a far higher surface area, a far greater surface area. And so we know that the rate for experiment C is going to be far higher or far greater than that of experiment A. So on the graph, we expect the graph to be far steeper, but important to remember that this graph is going to reach the same volume because we have used the same mass and the same concentration of our reactants. So we would expect our graph to be far steeper and reach completion sooner, but certainly still reach completion at the same time. And so in answer to question 5.5, we say here that they've asked us to compare the gradient for graph C to graph A and the gradient for graph C is going to be far greater than. So there we've answered the first part of the question. Now important to see here that they've asked us to use collision theory to fully explain the answer and it's a four mark question. So we do need to give a full explanation. So our first or our starting point, and there are two ways to do this. You could either do this from the point of view of experiment C or from the point of view of experiment A. I have done this for the point of view of experiment C. So I've started out by saying that the surface area of the calcium carbonate powder is greater than that of the granules. So we're saying that we understand that powder has a higher surface area than granules. And so then relating that to the particle model of matter, therefore more particles are exposed with a correct orientation. The second point that we need to make is that since there are now more particles that are exposed with a correct orientation, that means we are going to have more effective collisions or more collisions per unit time and therefore more effective collisions. And then our final mark is then for saying that we understand that if we have more collisions and therefore more effective collisions, that is going to increase the rate. Um, if you had chosen to do this from the point of view of experiment A, you would say that, that the granules have a smaller surface area than the powder. A smaller surface area means that there would be fewer collisions. Fewer collisions means that there would be fewer effective collisions. And fewer effective collisions means that your rate for the reaction would be lower. Question 5.6. Assume that the molar gas volume at 40 degrees Celsius is 25.7 cubic decimeters per mole. Calculate the mass of calcium carbonate used in experiment A. And so what we need to start by doing here is we start by determining the number of moles of carbon dioxide that is produced because we know what volume of carbon dioxide is produced. And so we can do that using the given molar gas volume where we say our number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to the volume that's produced over the molar gas volume where the volume produced in cubic decimeters is 0 0.5 we divide cubic centimeters by 1000 to convert it into cubic decimeters and the molar gas volume given to us at this temperature as 25.7 and therefore our number of moles of carbon dioxide that's produced is 0 0.5 zero one nine five obviously we do not round this yet because it's not our final answer we can then say from our balanced equation that our ratio of carbon dioxide to calcium carbonate which is what we've been asked is a ratio of one to one one mole of carbon dioxide is a result of one mole of calcium carbonate which means that since we know we produced 0 0.0195 moles of carbon dioxide we must have started with 0 0.0195 moles of calcium carbonate. And then finally, to convert this into a mass, as per the question, we can therefore say that our mass of calcium carbonate is equal to the number of moles times the molar mass, number of moles as we've just calculated, 0 0.0195. The molar mass for calcium carbonate is 100. And therefore, we know that this was 1.95 grams of calcium carbonate that was reacted in this reaction. This question, when marked according to the marking guidelines, there would be one mark allocated for correctly identifying the rate of the reaction as the dependent variable. And then there's one mark for identifying the surface area, state of divisional particle size 
as the independent variable important to note here that time is not an acceptable dependent variable. Question 5.2.1 was a one mark question and so there was one mark allocated for correctly identifying the rate as decreasing or saying that the rate is slowing down. 5.2.2 when we needed to state here that the reaction has stopped or we could have also said that the rate is equal to zero for that mark. In calculating the average rate, the, in this case there was not a mark allocated for a formula but it is still a good idea to start with some kind of formula. There was one mark allocated for the change in volume, one mark for the change in time and then one mark for the correct final answer. Question 5.4, since we have shown or since we have demonstrated an understanding that equal mass and an equal mass of calcium carbonate and equal concentration of hydrochloric acid, as long as those two remain the same, we are always going to produce the same volume and therefore 5.4, we got one mark for correctly saying that those two volumes would be equal to. In our explanation of using collision theory, there was one mark for saying that the gradient of graph C is going to be greater than the gradient of graph A. That was our first mark. The next mark was for comparing the surface areas of powder to that of granules. The next mark was for saying, since we now have a greater surface area, relating that to number of collisions and therefore number of effective collisions. And then the final mark for then bringing that to the question, which is showing that we understand that it increases the rate.